When you have had a smartphone for a while, it can start to feel slow. And RAM, that is the random access memory, can be the issue. Now RAM is the place where your device stores temporary files and resources. And when a program needs something, rather than pulling it all the way from the memory, it quickly pulls out those files from the RAM, giving you a smoother and a seamless user experience. With that, devices with more RAM can store more data. Hence are smoother even while playing demanding games or while doing heavy multitasking. And devices with low RAM even struggles while doing rudimentary things like browsing the internet or while watching a video. The same is the case with any form of computer. But unlike computers where you can physically add as much RAM as you need, on smartphones the RAM is proprietary and cannot be physically added or removed without blowing the whole thing up. But since your device memory, the memory that you use to store data, is quite similar to your RAM as it also stores data although at a quite slower rate, which means you can turn a small portion of a SD card or a device memory into RAM. And this is known as virtually creating RAM for your device. So I'm your host HK, let's make some RAM. So in order to expand your RAM, you will need three things. Number one, a class 4 or higher SD card. I strongly recommend using a class 6 or class 10 SD card as faster the SD card, better will be the overall performance. Number two, a rooted Android device. If your device is not rooted or if you don't know what root is, check the links in the description and get your device rooted. Number three, an app from Play Store called as Rosoft RAM Expander which will make the process much simpler. Now Rosoft RAM Expander is a paid app on Play Store and for the money it's totally worth it. But before you go ahead and make the investment, click the second link under the thumbs up button and install this free app called as Memory Info and Swap File Check. It will tell you whether your device is compatible for RAM expansion or not. So install this free app from the Play Store, then tap on the Rosoft RAM Expander Test tab on the bottom, then select the SD card location and after the test is completed, tap for results. If a window saying congratulations pop up, then you're good to go. If not, then try it again. Still, if you get no congratulation pop up, then your device kernel probably does not support RAM expansion and your money is safe. Or you can give it a shot. If it fails, then you can always ask for an app refund within two hours of purchasing this app and get your money back from Play Store. So there's nothing to lose. So get the RAM Expander app from the Play Store and open it up. Make sure that your device is connected to the internet. Don't forget to grant the root permissions to this app. And straight up, you'll see a bunch of options and numbers. You can either manually configure each one of these settings individually, or you can simply tap on the optimal value button and the app will automatically configure all the values based on your device. And with that, 90% of the work is done. Now the only thing that you're gonna configure is the swap file slider here. From here you can select the amount of RAM that you want to create. The app will automatically set it to a maximum RAM value that your device can stably support which is 3 GB in my case. I'll not recommend you going above the optimal value so let's set it to an even 1 GB of RAM as we don't need anything above that. You can also set it to as low as 400 MB of RAM or you can go as high as 4 GB of RAM. But according to me, 1GB on top of your existing hardware RAM is more than enough for any activity on your device. So let's go ahead and do a quick rundown. Number 1. Open the app. Number 2. Grant the root permissions and make sure that the internet is turned on. Number 3. Tap on the optimal value button. Number 4. Select the amount of RAM that you want to create and don't go above the optimal value. After that, you'll need to tap on the swap active button at the top. Then it'll ask you to select your external SD card location. You can also try the internal SD card or internal memory. If it worked for you, do let me know in the comments below. That's our SD card out of which 17 GB is free although we only need 1 GB of space. Let's go ahead and select that and then tap on the swap active button again and the swapping process will begin. Now depending on the amount of RAM you want to create, it can take between 2 to 15 minutes and it's almost done. If everything goes right, it should look something like this. Let's close that. And upon sliding down your notification tab, you will find a new info bar showing the amount of expanded RAM that you just have created. Originally, I had 2 GB of RAM on my device, plus one more extra GB of RAM that we have just created, with a total of around 3 GB of RAM, which means, woohoo, it did work. 
And on a final note, the amount of RAM that you have just created will not be reflected in your device application manager as it's a virtual RAM, not a hardware based RAM, but it will function similar to your internal RAM. So earlier when your device or a certain app needed more RAM and there was simply not enough RAM, the app or the game slowed down or lagged a lot due to insufficient RAM. But now after expanding your RAM, when a device needs more RAM, the virtual RAM or the VRAM that you have just created will be utilized giving you a smoother experience than before. Now one really basic thing that you should understand is that there are several other factors like CPU frequency, number of cores, cache memory, app optimization for your device, background activities and RAM that affects the speed and performance of your device. Which means RAM alone cannot speed your device but it will help apps which require more RAM to run faster on your device. That's how RAM work. However, you won't see a huge boost in performance in day-to-day -day activities and apps that uses less RAM as your hardware RAM will pretty much do the job. So while playing low-end games on high-end devices with sufficient RAM, you won't see any boost in performance. However, you'll definitely notice a significant improvement in speeds and performance, especially while playing high-end games on low-end devices or devices with low amount of RAM. And that's enough knowledge for today. If you found this video to be helpful, interesting and if you got to learn something new today, please give this video a thumbs up that really helped me a lot. And do subscribe if you want to watch more interesting videos like these. Until then, I'm your host HK from The Android Guy signing out and I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.